Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on today's Down the Line podcast with Jeremy Humphrey. Uh, it's a it's a rainy day today, so not very much baseball is going to be played today. Um, I would like to welcome today's podcast interview. It's going to be Wheeling Catholic Central's head coach, Todd Cover. Good morning, Coach. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. Well, like you said, uh, we talked a little bit earlier. It's a it's a rainy one out there. Uh, hopefully, everything uh, can dry out in time to get some games in for the rest of the week, or you know, the start of next week, depending on how it goes. Well, we hope so. We hope so. We got a bunch scheduled, and you know, we got already four to make up. So, you know, hopefully, we can get dry down here soon. Good. Well. Uh, give us a little bit about uh, who you are, uh, how long you've been coaching, uh, just a little bit of an introduction of who you are. Okay. Well, uh, again, my name's Todd Cover. Um, I, I've been coaching my, my oldest son's 22. I've been coaching him since he was five. So whatever that, you know, 17 years, uh, he plays in Musk Kingdom now. He's a senior there. Uh, you know, I've coached my kids in travel ball. Um, you know, I, I kind of wanted to go to travel ball to kind of let somebody else coach them. And, you know, I kind of got sucked into it because people knew I, I played at West Liberty, uh, you know, had a pretty, pretty knowledgeable about baseball. So once they find out out, they want you to you know, help out. And, you know, it's been, it's been a blessing. It's been fun. Um, you know, baseball is a passion of mine. You know, I, I'm played banker by day and, <laughs> you know, my passion is really baseball though. You know, it's, it's a, kind of a bucket list for me is I will kind of want to retire early, move South and, and volunteer coach at some college, you know, I just, I love the game. I love being around it. I love being around the kids. So, um, you know, that being said, I've, I've coached with, uh, so my kids have played for Pittsburgh outlaws. I coached there for a couple of years. Uh, I've coached the high Valley Mudcats uh, way back when, um, wheeling wild things. I, you know, I helped out, uh, we had a team there and then wheeling post one, um, myself and, and another gentleman, Tim Gessler, uh, we kind of took that team from when they were seven or eight years old and went all the way through until they are you know, 14, I think, is when we wrapped it up. Uh, we had a really good stretch there, a lot of great players, a lot of great athletes uh, in, in that class. And you know, so it's it's been a blessing. It's been a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of people, see a lot of different things. So yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world. What was your uh, best experience with coaching uh, the travel ball side of things? Um, you know, been to Cooperstown twice. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you ever been there, it's a pretty cool, cool environment. Um, I would say, so we played a team from New Orleans, uh, 2019. My, my now junior son, Seth, um, his team with post one, we played a team out of New Orleans and didn't think much about it. It was a good game. You know, they were good. We were good. I think we were we were down maybe 11-9 going the sixth inning. They scored like five runs to, you know, kind of put it away, maybe 16-9. You know, kind of just followed um, followed them a little bit uh, just because, you know, we got to know their coaches a little bit and talked to them a little bit. And here they come. Um, in August, Little League World Series pops up, and there they are. They were the Little League World Series champions from uh, from New Orleans. Oh, nice. 19, so – you know, we matched up rosters, and it was it was guy for guy pretty much of who we played. Um, so it just tells you the – you never know who you're going to run across, the level of competition um, that you have up there. And, and also two of the guys we played against, uh, one up there and one for Beaver Valley Red that we played against are in the top 50 prospects for this upcoming major league draft. They both reclassified. So, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool when you sit back and think about those kind of things and – Again, you don't know, you know, their kids, <laughs> you know, yeah. you have kids and their kids and you never really think about it. But, you know, here we are, you know, whatever, four or five years later and, and they're all of a sudden they're out there pretty big, uh, pretty big names in the baseball scene. Yeah, we had that uh, situation come about with us. Uh, we were in South Carolina playing at Shipyard and uh, we played a team from New Albany for the championship. We ended up winning. And then this past year, that New yeah. Albany team ended up making, you know, Team Ohio, I guess. Right. And then I went back and looked at the rosters through Game Changer, and they had like four guys that were on that New Albany team that we faced yeah. that were playing in the Little League World Series. So that was kind of nice yeah, that's and, awesome. and, and neat to see. Um, so I kind of get a little, you know, feel for what you, what you just said there. 
Um, I, this is your first year at Wheeling Central as a head coach, correct? Yeah, I helped out. So I helped out last year. I was kind of the pitching coach last year for him. Um, you know, Jason had, I think I had four or five kids and, you know, they're getting older. They're going, getting through middle school. You know, it was one, had one going to high school, one going to college. So, you know, he just couldn't keep up with it. Um, you know, so he decided to, to resign. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to get the job, uh, which I'm super excited about. Again, a lot of these kids I've coached in a former life at a travel ball organization at one time or another in their lives. So, you know, I've, yeah. I've known most of them for a long time. So it was kind of, uh, I think, a good fit. Um, just knowing it, just knowing the personalities and, you know, they're all friends with, with my kids, obviously. So uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and I, I couldn't say no to it. Uh, right. You know, I'm pretty busy in my day job, but, you know, I'm, I'm also very fortunate that I'm kind of flexible uh, as to where I can get away a little bit and, and help help coach these guys and, you know, hopefully take us to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you were the pitching coach. So are you hiring somebody else to, to take your spot as pitching coach? Or are you going to take that over? Well, I kind of just I kind of just kept taking it over. Um you know, my, my style of leadership is kind of include everyone. So I got two two great assistants on varsity to help me out, Ryan Storm, Ryan Rosnick, and I have uh, Caden Yoakum and Ben Foster who, who run our JV program. So I got really good assistants. Uh, so what I've done is kind of just try to divvy up some of the responsibilities. Uh, you know, I kind of give Ryan Storm and, and Ryan Rosnick the opportunity that they can, they can uh, you know, coach the bases, coach the offense, and, uh, you know, also take care of the infield. And then I, I kind of do the pitching. So – you know, obviously, if there's something I, I think we need, we need to change or they think we need to change, you know, we talk about it. But um, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, in an ideal world, yeah, it would be nice to have, uh, you know, someone helping me out that could just take care of the pitching. But right. you know, I kind of enjoy it at the same time. And, you know, knock on wood, I've been pretty successful at it. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, it's always nice to have uh, coaches that know your style, know your system. Um, that you have a rapport with that uh, can do the things that you expect them to do. Um, with that said, your players, um, I read something earlier. Uh, you're returning a lot of underclassmen this year. So how many seniors graduated from the 2023 team? And what are your expectations for your players this year? Yeah, so we had we had four seniors graduate last year. Um, you know, some of them played part time, some of them played full time. Um, but we have 13 out of our 17 returning. So we have four freshmen and we've added to the group, but we have 13 returning lettermen, which is really good. Um, and, and a lot of those are pitching. You know, we this team has a lot of talent uh, and it's young talent. You know, we only have three seniors this year in, in 2024. So, you know, a lot of these guys will be back with us again next year, uh, which is which is good um, to a point, you know, it, I tell people one through 17, I'll put us up against anybody in the, in the OVAC or anyone in the state really. Um, yeah. And I'm not trying to be, you know, brag about anything or, or, you know, be bold. I'm just, we got a lot of talent, um, you know, but at the same time, I got to put the right nine in the right positions at the right time to, right. to, to be successful. You know, talent doesn't win you games uh, the way you play when you get wins you games. So, you Absolutely. know, um, we have high expectations amongst ourselves. Um, I think, I think yesterday the first Metro News media poll came out and we were ninth. Um, and I think that's a little underrated for us. And again, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, cocky or, or anything to that nature. But at the same time, I think we got a lot of talent to do uh, some major things this year. And, you know, hopefully we got we got a couple kids injured right now and hopefully we can get those guys back to to full health and, you know, we can have a full team. But, you know, we played four games so far. Uh, we haven't had a full team yet. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that either. So we had um, Braxton Billick, who's, who's our one of our outfielders. He, uh, he was playing basketball the first game. Uh, they were downstate for basketball. And then the second, the week, a week later, we didn't play for a week later. And uh, we had a kid that was on a uh, foreign foreign trip to uh, to France. You know, yeah. Tom thing, you can't tell them to pass it up. So <laughs> right. yeah. we were missing him. You know, the hockey guys are in a, in a tournament in, in – out there in Philadelphia. So they were just coming back. Uh, they actually drove back like late Friday night for an early Saturday morning game. Um, and then we had uh, two kids out last week because it was spring break for the school. So and they were on family trips. So, you know, it'll be nice to have everyone back. 
you know, as we talked about the weather, you know, hopefully it can break and we can get some games in because I would like to see what this team can, you know, fully do, fully healthy and, and fully back. Yeah. Now I got a question for you. I mean, these kids knew that spring break was coming. Like, is it was it a uh, family trip that was like excusable, or was it just you know they family first, and that's how your philosophy is? And yeah, I mean, family's always first. You know, they they asked me about it, and I told them, yeah, it'd be okay, because at the time we weren't supposed to play that many games. So. Spring break with uh, with Wheeling Central in a Catholic school uh, always falls on the week of Easter, Holy Week. Uh, so right. well, the way Holy Week and Wheeling Central works is we are not allowed to play or practice from Thursday to Saturday. So you know going okay. in, you're going to lose Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so, you know, we had games scheduled on, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday of last week. They both got rained out. So, you know, it ended up working out. Um, you know, it's hard to tell – kids not to not to go with their families uh, right you know as much as I want them to be there it's it's hard to tell them no and and it will always be that way with me um, you know you don't get time back with your family yeah. uh, you know we've all we've all been in situations where you know we've lost, known somebody that it's been lost too soon so it's hard for me to tell someone no don't go to your family um, you know again as much as I want them to be be there for baseball it's hard to say no yeah no I agree with that um, and I and I completely forgot um, you know, public versus private. Um, I should have known uh, with the history that I have with Madonna. Um, you know, they go down for the uh, Catholic tournament down, and I think it's in Charleston every year. Yeah, um, they, they actually canceled that this year. So, um, oh. yeah, it's, it, that's one we usually count on because it's all on turf down there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so in place of that, we ended up, we were very fortunate to get into the Hurricane tournament down there. Um, and if you know anything about or if you follow West Virginia baseball for the last 20 years, you know, you'll know who Hurricane High School is. Yeah, absolutely. But anyways, their head coach, Brian Suffin, and I went to uh, went to college together. So I've, I've known him for a while. Uh, we have another kid on a team that his, his father grew up with him. Uh, so we're very fortunate to get into that in place of the Catholic tournament. And, you know, they, they got turf down there. So, you know, hopefully we can get three really good games in down there. Um, you know, that's coming up on the 19th and 20th. Um, we got we got Tyler. Tyler has a wooden bat tournament every year. Um, you know we're fortunate to get invited to that. That's coming up on the 12th and 13th. So, you know we do have some games coming up that, that are going to be on turf. So you know you kind of count on those. those yeah. Games, so. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about your roster there for a second. I know you kind of, you think you had what three seniors is what three you said. Seniors. Mm -hmm. um, any of those junior, seniors, or even some of your sophomores, uh, recruiting wise, you know, are they players to watch? Do you have some uh, interest from from the higher levels? Uh, tell me a little bit about your your roster. Yeah, I'd say yeah. So we have seventeen. Uh, you know, it's kind of early in the process for the freshmen and sophomores, but I, yeah. I would say this is just an estimate on my part. I would say nine to ten of them will, will end up playing or have the opportunity to play college baseball. Um, and that's, you know, that could be a little bit more just depending, you know, some kids just don't, they don't want to do it, um, you know, which I understand. They just want to go to school, you know, be a student and get on with their lives. But I would say at least 10, at least 10 out of the 17 we got on varsity this year uh, do want to go play college baseball. Uh, so the three seniors for us have um, been phenomenal leaders. Uh, you know, like I said, We've been at this since November in the weight room and conditioning and, you know, hitting practice. They've been there. And, you know, a lot of the things that, you know, maybe some of the someone's, you know, jacking around or goofing around during lifting, you know, they, they've taken care of a lot of that. A lot of those problems for me, which has been phenomenal. Um, again, those seniors, Eli Tucker. So he's our center fielder, you know, probably one of the best defensive center fielders in the state, if not the best. Uh, he just covers ground left and right you know, up, back, um, you know, we're working with him to get a little more consistent with the bat. He knows that um, he's going to West Liberty on a kicking scholarship um, next year. Uh, I just talked to him yesterday and he, you know, we're going to try to see if we can get him to maybe walk on the baseball team as well. So nice. Um, he's, he's one of them. Uh, Landon Prager is, is another one. Um, you know, he's a big hockey player, um, very smart kid. You know, he's going to be, can be ranked pretty pretty high up in the, in, his, in his class you know maybe maybe valedictorian i'm not sure how that's going to shake out but you know a very smart kid he'll have a lot, a lot of opportunities ahead of him and then uh, hunter mueller 
Um, he's a seniors catcher. He can play the windfield for us. Uh, he wants to play college baseball. He has a couple offers now from, um, I think, one junior college and, and one uh, Division three. So, you know, those guys, you know, have been really the, the glue for us, um, you know, and, and really great people um, and role models for our younger kids. So uh, the junior class, we, you know, I think a lot, a lot of them are, will move on. Uh, so we have my, my middle son, Seth Cover. He's an infielder and pitcher. He's, uh, he's kind of been hurt. He's been on a shelf with a shoulder. Uh, he would, he would technically be our, probably be our number one. Um, he's been on a shelf with a shoulder injury since last summer, um, you know, was quarterback of the football team. You know, so he really didn't have too much for much of a break. He just played through it in, in the yeah. fall. Um, you know, we're trying to get him all the PT so we can get the MRI done. And I think we finally got to the point where he's got an MRI next Monday so we can finally find out what's going on. Figure with it out. Um, but he's been able to play third base. You know, he's just kind of sidearming a little bit versus, you know, throwing over the top as he does as a pitcher. So yeah, he, he definitely wants to play college baseball. Uh, I look at um, – Another junior, Gary Hatfield. Uh, he grew up Beaver Valley Red kid, so you know how talented he's, he is. Uh, yeah, he's a pitcher. He's probably our, our number two guy. Uh, he's just now coming back to. Uh, he had a shoulder injury as well in hockey. Uh, big hockey player. Uh, they won the state title in hockey, so um, you know he's oh, just wow. back into getting back into shape pitching wise. He threw a bullpen yesterday. Looked pretty good. Uh, he can also. He's also our shortstop and can catch if we need him to. So. He'll definitely he'll definitely move on to play college baseball uh, at what level just, you know, remains to be seen. But he's a very talented kid. Um, Lukey T.U., very good golfer, um, you know, plays right field for us, outfield for us. Um, he's also a junior. He probably could have the opportunity to play college baseball. I think he's more into golf. Uh, so he might have some opportunities there or he might just go for academics because he's a very smart student. Um, you know, his dad's a doctor. Uh, so <laughs> he'll have some opportunities on that side. Uh, he set up. Yeah. Yeah. I joke with him. He may be, I may be working for him one day. So, <laughs> um, just a very smart kid. Uh, Andy Baylor, uh, he was on mostly primarily JV last year. Uh, he's a pitcher and outfielder for us. Uh, you know, picked up some, picked up some weight, picked up some velocity, uh, from last year, this year. Um, you know, he probably have an outside shot at playing if he wants to. Again, you know, we haven't had that conversation yet um, as far as whether he wants to or not. And then Braxton Billick, uh, he plays basketball. We're just now getting him back into shape for baseball. He's a, he's also an outfielder, super fast kid. I think he wants to play college baseball, and I think he'll have the opportunity to, to play college baseball. So those are – I think that's all of our uh, seniors and juniors. Um, and then the sophomore class and the freshman class are really loaded with talent. Um, yeah. You know, it, it and it spills over into the JV team as well. You know, we probably have two or three kids down there that really could be on varsity, um, but I, I can't dress everyone. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. You want to get them reps as best as right. you can. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, with your with that team that you have, it sounds like you have a bunch of dudes that want baseball. And I think, you know, I think that lacks in some of the teams – not just in the Ohio Valley, but everywhere. You know, you can't just have a roster built strictly on four or five dudes. You want to have, you know, 11, 12, 13 deep full of guys that want to be there and play baseball. Um, you know, back to that leadership role, you know, when when those three seniors are taking the leadership in the, in the weightlifting room or, you know, hitting whatever it is, all season hitting, do you allow them to just kind of like – take over and be the leaders and say what they need to say or do you have a you know do you have to step in sometimes or uh, I, i'd say for the most part you know this is a great group of kids i really haven't had too many problems um you know not just the varsity kids the jv kids like we have 28 on uh on our total total roster jv and varsity i really haven't had a problem with any kid you know um these kids show up you know we've which we haven't had in the past, you know, I, again, I just, I just worked one year under, under Jason and he did a really good job. Um, but we didn't have the numbers that we have now. We didn't have the depth that we have uh, this year. And, you know, that kind of spills out or spills over into the off season workouts, you know, off season workouts last year, we had maybe eight to 10 guys, you know, we were, we were 22 deep with, with workouts this year, you know, and yeah, that's, nice. I mean, that's, three times a week, lifting, conditioning, um, hitting, you know, 22 
average attendance is 22. It, that would go as high as 25, 27, just depending on if basketball or hockey was playing and wrestling. Um, you know, so the commitment is there. Um, so I really haven't had too, too many problems, but I guess to answer your question, yeah, I would, I would kind of let them handle it. Um, you know, and, and hopefully if it gets any further, I wouldn't have to step in, but you know, yeah. we haven't had too many problems because these guys, as you said, are, are, are ball players. You know, they all grew up playing travel ball, um, which makes a difference because, you know, they're mentally locked in. They've seen a lot of things. They've been exposed to a lot of different players on a lot of different talent levels. So, you know, Nothing really phases them. Again, you know, that, that doesn't mean we're not going to get beat. That doesn't mean yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything as far as wins and losses. But, you know, the guys have seen it. Uh, they've been there. They're, they're ball players. They know how to play. They're, um, they're really into it. Their mentality is into it. Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. Uh, <laughs> job hazard. Um, but they're, they're really locked in. You know, for instance, we had a, one of our freshmen, you know, uh, we were playing Lindsay in a double header and um, I can say this now because we, we already played him twice, but uh, <laughs> you know, one of their, one of their pitchers was tipping their pit, tipping their pitches. And our, one of our freshmen actually noticed that and he pulled a group together and he said, Hey, listen, when he does this, he's going to throw a fastball. When he does this, he's throwing a curveball. And you know, that just shows you that kind of the baseball maturity that yeah. really goes, you know, a lot of people don't think about, um, you know, I'm sitting there watching the same game, and I didn't, I didn't see it. Of course, you know, <laughs> you know you it, had other things to. <laughs> a couple of things going on, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, so just with that, it took us from a. I think we we're tied two two at the time, and you know, after he told us that, I think we scored three runs the next inning. So you know, little things like that that people don't think about um, unless yeah. you're really a baseball guy. So. Again, that's that was super impressive, and it's it's happened. Um, it happened in another game too. So. You know, it wasn't just a one-time incident. Nice. I did see you split with Lindsley, so that was always, that's always nice. To at least yeah, get one from them. Yeah, I mean, it was 35 degrees with the wind howling. Uh, <laughs> probably neither team played up to or hit up to what their potential is. But, you know, it's two really yeah. good teams. Um, you know, Coach Cartwright does a really good job there. Uh, you know, they have a lot. I think they have eight, seven or eight seniors, so they have really a lot of leadership. Uh, they're going to be a really solid team, always are. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, to get a split there, uh, you know, it's really good. Um, and people around the state, you know, I think people say, oh, it's Lindsley, but you know, people don't know how good they are, um, because they're a private school and they're, and they're, they don't compete for the state championship. I think, you know, they're a little undervalued, um, across the state. So, you know, splitting with Lindsley is a really, really good day at the office, you know, yeah, I'm the most competitive guy in the world and I hate to lose, but you know, splitting with them, I mean, Again, wasn't the wasn't the worst thing, <laughs> right? Um, now you y'all didn't have a, a very successful season last year. I think you went what thirteen and fourteen or somewhere around that range. Yeah. Um, you, you have baseball guys on your roster, but how do you get them to buy in um, and prep for the upcoming twenty twenty four season? Um, knowing with what happened last year, how do you get well, them to go? Well, actually, that was our regular season record, and we kind of got hot in the playoffs. So, uh, okay. Virginia, you got to go through that. You got to win your section, and then you get if you win your section, you move on to regionals. And if you win the regionals, that that's when you go to the final four of the state. So, okay, our section has seven teams, and it's our section is loaded. I, you know, again, um, I don't know why we got so lucky. I guess, but uh, we have seven teams in our region, and you know, uh, Cameron's got two Division One pitchers. Uh, Madonna's always talented, as you know. You're familiar with them. Um, so it's really tough to get through just the section. I mean, and there's some other teams that are up and coming, you know, Peyton city's got some athletes going through that school now. Um, Magnolia's, you know, getting better every, every year. Um, so you don't want to discount those teams, but you know, it really is probably going to come down to us, Cameron and, um, and Madonna in the section. So anyway, yeah. last year we, we won the section We you know, we beat Cameron, down there, uh, we came back and we had to beat Madonna twice to get out of the section, and we ended up doing that. Um, very fortunate to do that. So our reward for that was to go to the regional, which was regional is set up in West Virginia. It's the best out of three. So uh, we were faced against Tyler, who at the time was like, I think their record was thirty and two, maybe. Uh, they were number one. They were number one in the state, so they were you know clear cut favorites. Uh, yeah. You know we lost the heartbreaker down there. It was three to one. 
Uh, we had a freshman pitch a really, really good game. Uh, second game, we came back and we beat them 4-2 up at our place, 470. And then down there, we had a 4 nothing lead uh, going to the bottom of seventh. Uh, our, our kid, our starting pitcher, hit the pitch limit. Um, so we had to pull him out and, you know, put a guy in there. That it's been was solid for us all year. He was a freshman through strike. So, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. They just started hitting the ball and yeah. ended up losing on a, on a walk off five, four, um, to get on state. And they ended up making it to the state championship game. So I think that tells you at that point, you kind of see the, the light bulb going off with some of our guys. Yeah. Um, and, and, and no disrespect to our guys last year, but the leaders, we did really didn't have the leadership. I think we have this year. Um, and, and the talent level, I think is night and day compared to last year. You know, again, as, as time moves on, these guys will get, get a little older, a little wiser, a little stronger. Um, you know, we relied on a lot of freshmen last year and a lot of sophomores last year that now become sophomores and juniors. So they've seen it they've been around it, um, which is, I think, exciting for us. Um, you know, I, I I heard your podcast with Adam, and I think he said the same thing. You know, our section's really loaded. Our region's really loaded. It's tough for a team to get down state. Um, there are some other regions in West Virginia where I think it's, I don't want to say a cakewalk, but it's a lot easier. Right. <laughs> a lot easier than, you know, what we have to get through. So, um, you know, you kind of prep for that and, you know, try to get them ready to be playing your best ball at the, at the um, right time of year, which, which happened last year. You know, as you said, we were around 500. Uh, for the regular season, then we kind of got hot in the playoffs, and I think we ended up 17 and 15 um, was our final record. And, okay. Uh, you know, we ended up I think fifth fifth in the state. I think we got ranked um, after everything was said and done. So nice. You know, you kind of take that and use that as motivation. You know, um, you know, I I know Tyler's coach pretty well. We've we've texted a lot in the off season, and <clears throat> you know, he said straight up that we were the best team that they played last year, um, and I. I take that as a very high, highly recommended comment. You know, that's, yeah. that's saying a lot, you know, for a team. They respect, they respect it something there. Right. So, you know, I think word, words getting around that, you know, we've got a lot of talent, uh, but again, talent doesn't win you games. It's how hard you work. I think I told the guys this yesterday, you know, I heard a great comment every weekend. I think it was Mike Tom and one of his comments was um, it's not what, it's not the potential, but it's how, how much effort you want to put into it. Uh, you know, something I kind of paraphrase it, but something to those effects. And, you know, if the guys want to put the work in, I think, you know, hopefully we can get on a streak here and, you know, start getting some games in for, for one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, I think our depth is one of our strengths, but you know, when you only played four games in three weeks, uh, it's hard, hard to use your depth. depth. It's yeah. hard to use your depth. It's hard to get everybody into the games and get them acclimated and, you know, see what they can do in certain situations. But, um, uh, you know, like I said, the talent is there. Uh, it's going to be up to these guys how hard they want to work and how, how much they want to push. And, you know, hopefully we can get, get on a roll here um, towards towards the later part of the year and, and uh, you know, go on a run again. Yeah, no, I completely understand. And those game reps are important, not just for your upperclassmen, but for those, you know, freshmen and sophomores as well, just to kind of see the game, the speed of the game and, and get used to that high school level stuff. Uh, Coach Valesco from Harrison Central also had that same type of uh, communication um, back in, I think he said it was the 2022 season um, with his juniors that he had after losing in the districts, or I can't remember which one it was. Um, and and uh, those juniors stayed back after that game, you know, and you can kind of feel, you know, the, the, the emotion coming off of those players thinking, you know, we're going to come back. We're going to be ready to go and make a run similar to what you guys did last year. Um, he spoke on his, his team in 2023 when they made their state run last year, um, kind of having that same situation from 2022. Um, and I completely feel you with the, uh, the, you know, having the hardest section to go through and how some areas you feel like have it a little easier because I feel like every year Toronto has to go up against Highland. Yeah, it's Toronto Highland, Toronto Highland, Toronto Highland. It seems every year, um, and some teams don't have to go through a Highland. Some teams don't have to go, you know, through that every year. And I feel like the last two years, it's come down to us and Highland every year. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to figure it out. Uh, hopefully, it's this year and you know and on. But you know, they seem to put out a pretty good little roster every single year. Yeah, they're always loaded. You know, you're talking about 
getting through Highland. I mean, I, they won a state championship last year. You know, we have – there's three kids that, uh, you know, on that team, the Monocle uh, triplets that I've coached in travel ball, and I, I know, uh, you know, they're on our Wild Things team. So, you know, we followed them pretty closely, and, and you're right. You know, people don't realize how tough it is to get through a team like that. Uh, you know, as talented as Toronto is, it's – nothing's guaranteed. You know, you got to play – your best game and hopefully they make a couple mistakes and you you know you can get through it that's the same thing you know we're dealing with uh you know to get through our section and region um it is what it is you know there's nothing we can do to change it so uh you know we just try to put our head down and, and grind it out and you know see what happens absolutely i'm gonna bring up the ovac standings right now um when did y'all move to uh 3a was that this year yeah this year the first year for 3a um and, and so Enrollment's been up. So the uh, the sophomore class and the freshman class at William Central, uh, student student population wise, has pushed us up to. I think we're right on the brink of 300 right now. Um, so they bumped us up to 3A and OVACs, and then uh, the state does theirs every two years. And I think you know we're we're getting bumped up to 2A there next year. So oh, wow. you know the section of region we talk about is going to be all be changed next year for us. So. Um, Again, you know, it's it it is what it is. It's it's a good problem to have. You know, Wheeling Central is growing, which is uh, you know an awesome school. Uh, you know, my oldest one went to Wheeling Park, uh, and I can't say anything bad about Wheeling Park. I can't say anything bad about Lindsley or, or Wheeling Central. You know, us in Wheeling, us that live in Wheeling, you know, have three really good options. Uh, yeah. You know, my younger ones, you know, wanted to go to a, a different environment. Um, you know, Mrs. Sankum, who's the principal there, uh, her son Eli played on our travel team from seven up through 14. So we got to know her pretty well. And when it came time for Seth, who's a, who's a junior now, to make a decision, you know, he, she said, why don't you come take a look? So, you know, we went down there and he knew a couple people, you know, shadow for a day and he just loved it. So, yeah. you know, when, you, <laughs> when your school motto is think and act like Christ, it's hard to go wrong. Uh, right. You know, so. They like the smaller environment. You know, they have a, a ton of friends that they hang out with a lot. And, you know, the big school, again, there's nothing wrong with it. I went to Brooks, you know, at the time it was 1,500 students. Uh, and, again, like I said, my oldest one went to Park. There's nothing wrong with the big school. Um, no. I, but I think the smaller environment, now that we've experienced it, is 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 awesome. It's been really good for these kids. Um, like I said, they got a lot of lot of great friends, uh, a lot of guys they hang out with, and you know this is a very close knit team. Uh, speaking of baseball and, and the roster, you know, right. it, it's nothing for you know any freshman to come up and start joking around with one of the seniors like that. That doesn't happen in every school. Uh, no, <laughs> it's a it's a very close knit school. There's not a lot of uh, goofballs that I wouldn't want my kids hanging around with. Um, you know, and it's it's really what makes coaching fun is just being around these group of kids every single day. Could do. Now let, let's talk about your area down there. Uh, you know, the Wheeling area, what is the youth development like and how do you even get your kids to, um, to get to Wheeling central, you know, with Wheeling park and uh, John Marshall, I don't think is that, that much further away from y'all. Yeah as well as Lindsley and everything else. So how do you get the kids to uh, buy into Catholic Central there? Well, again, I think, you know, it comes down to the school, really. Um, you know, when I, I remember the first thing they said when we went to visit Wheeling Central was, you know, whether you're coming for the great academics, you're going to have great sports opportunities, or whether you're coming for the great sports, you're going to have great academic um, opportunities. So, you know, I think it just comes down to the school. Um, as a program-wise, I just – I want to have – I want these guys to be treated well. Uh, you know, with that comes some money. Uh, we, we raised a whole whole lot of money this past year, and, you know, we're going to continue to try to do that, um, you know, to try to have the outside perception of, you know, this is the best program in Wheeling for me or it's the best program in the OVAC or, you know, depends on how, how far we can take that. You know, I think, you know, it just, it just so happens that we have a, a roster full of kids that, you know, grew up in a Catholic system, uh, grew up in the Catholic private schools, you know, all the way up. We have some, you know, transfer over from a um, couple of transfers over from public schools, uh, my kids being two of them. So we've been a little bit fortunate there. But, you know, as far as perception, I think we just want to perceive it as, hey, you know, if I go to Wheeling Central, I know I'm going to get an opportunity no matter if I'm a freshman or a senior. You know, we have one freshman, Zane Rosnick. He starts. He started every game for us. Um, and, you know, some all four of our freshmen have played so far this year. So I think 
the perception of, hey, if I go to Winning Central, I'm really good freshman. Am I going to be able to compete? Am I going to be able to play? You know, am I going to get on the field? I I don't want to speak for other programs, but I don't think that happens everywhere else. You know, I think right. there's some programs where you don't get on the field until you're probably a junior, unless you're an absolute superstar. Um, you know, again, all 17 of these kids, I wouldn't hesitate to put in the game at any time. So whether that's a freshman, a senior, a sophomore, junior, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm looking for a skill set. And if you right. have that skill set, you, you know, I'm going to put you in the game. So um, I agree. I think just the perception of, hey, you get a chance to get on the field, um, smaller school environment. Maybe you don't have as much competition from the, uh, you know, from the numbers perspective. Um, you know, that's kind of what we're, we're selling now. Okay. No, I did go and I creeped on your uh, game changer. Uh, good thing about that. Uh, you have 10 of your 13 last games on the road. Yeah. Uh, just trying to get ready for a state run, you knowing that you're not going to be at your home field or. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was by design. It just kind of happens. <laughs> happens that way. Um, <laughs> you know, like I said, we got invited to the Tyler tournament. So that's, that's uh, two of them. And then we got invited to the hurricane tournament, which is three more of them. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I kind of like playing on the road. Um, it's less responsibility for me. Uh, <laughs> you just show up and play and then leave. Um, All right. You don't have to. I, yeah, I, don't and drag. If, I don't know if it's really by design. It's just kind of, that's kind of way that it fell out. Um, you know, Seth Stasky, who's been a, been a great idea and has been a, you know, a very good partner with me, uh, kind of put the schedule together and I kind of just said, yeah, it looks good. Um, you know, I wish we could have had more turf games, uh, especially, <laughs> especially this first part of the season. But, you know, right. it is it is what it is. But yeah, to answer your question, I don't I don't know if it's by design. I kind of noticed that after you put that question there. Um, yeah. I try not to look too much ahead. Um, but I don't know. That's that's <laughs> <I think laughs> it worked out that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, you, you said something about Adam Angel and, you know, watching the interview that, that I did with him. And he also has his sons playing for him uh, as well. Uh, tell me about your experience with having, you know, your sons being able to play with you at the high school level. Uh, like I said, I was kind of, you know, when I thought about whether I wanted to apply for this job or not. Uh, you know, a lot of people said it's a once in a lifetime to have your, you know, coach your two kids in high school. Um, so, you know, it is. Uh, it, maybe it's not so special for them right now, but I, I think maybe one day when they look back, you know, when they have kids and understand, you know, the, the roles and how it works, uh, you know, they'll maybe appreciate it. Um, but I've always coached them. You know, I've always coached their 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 travel team growing up. So it's it's nothing new for them, I don't think. Um, you know, one of the things I, I did say, you know, during the interview is I think you know, I wasn't I didn't coach at all Seth's freshman year. Uh, he's again, he's the junior now. Braden's a sophomore. Um, I didn't coach Seth's freshman year. You know, he started and played every game um, last year. You know, I wasn't the head coach. Um, Braden and Seth both started, you know, most every game. Um, I, so I think, again, when I said during the interview, I think they've established themselves as players and not just my kids, you know, so. Right. so you know, I want to be clear with that. You know, if they're struggling, I'm going to take them out of the lineup. I think they know that. I think everybody in the, on this roster knows that. Um, I'm not doing this just to get them into the game. Uh, you know, I think they, right. they've they've done that on their own. Um, so, you know, that being said, it, it is a joy uh, to be around them and, you know, see their development. Um, again, you know, hopefully one day they'll look back and really appreciate that. They probably don't right now. Uh, it's just, hey, can you bring my glove? Can you do this? You know. Uh, yeah. just, just as everyone else's parent, but, um, it's fun. Like I said, this is a great group to be around. Uh, these guys have great attitudes. Um, they love baseball. They love to be around baseball. You know, they want to play, they want to compete, um, at a very high level. So, uh, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had any complaints so far. That's good. Now let's just talk, go right into the complaint department. Uh, you know, how do you, uh, how do you handle, uh, I always ask this to every coach cause every coach is different. Um, parents, you know, how do you control your parents um, as far as like, do you have them sign contracts? Do you just trust their ability to know that uh, you're there for the right re reasons to put their players in a successful spot to be, you know, successful? Um, you know, how, how do you control that that part of coaching? 
Yeah. Uh, well, you know, again, being great kids is, is number one. You know, they raise great kids. So, you know, I assume they're great parents just because of that. And, and I, I know a lot of them and the ones I do know are, are great parents. Um, so that being said, that, that helps. Um, you number two, through, through the school, they do sign a contract, you know, no bashing on social media, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. you know, they do sign a contract, you know, not to, not to bash through the school. Um, when I had the parent meeting, I said, you know, give me 24 hours rule. If we just, you know, take the Tyler game last year, if we just got walked off five, four and a heartbreaker, don't, don't call me asking about playing time two minutes after the game, you know, give me, give me 24 hours to, to calm down, give your emotions 24 hours, calm down. And then let's talk about it. Um, yeah. But I, I've, you know, I've kind of laid the groundwork um, to this date, knock on wood, I haven't had any parent complaints. So that's been good. Um, you know, it's just about, right fits, you know, um, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I, you know, one kid, maybe he's on fire, maybe he's seven for seven for his last 10 or something, you know, okay. Well, why isn't he batting up in the order? Well, I'll tell you why, you know, cause when he hits seventh, he's going to get more fastballs. When he's hitting third, he's getting all curveballs, and he's not a great, great curveball hitter. So, you know, there's things like that, that maybe people don't understand right off the, right off the cuff, you know, right. Why, why is he batting ninth? He's, you know, he's hitting 700 over his last three, four games. Um, okay. Well, if I move him up to two, he's going to get curveballs all the time. And he, I don't know if he'll be able to handle that. You know, maybe right. he's a contact guy. Maybe he's not a power guy. So, you know, you kind of like that two-hole hitter to be contact. You know, do some hit and runs, do some bunts, you know, take some pitches to get the – let allow the leadoff guy to get the second base on a steal. You know, those, those kind of things. So, you know, I think just talking through things, um, you know, people tend to understand. They may not agree, um, and that's okay. They may not agree, but – yeah. I, you know, I think and I hope and I trust that they know I'm doing this for the right reasons. And the right reason for me is to bring these guys a state championship. Um, they deserve it. They put the work in. Uh, it's not about me. Uh, it's about these kids. And I want to put these kids in position to be successful. I want to win a state championship for them. Uh, at some point along the line, I want to get them to, to play college baseball. If they want to play college baseball, I want to do everything I can to help in that regard. Um so I think just knowing that I'm doing it for the right reasons is, is part of it. Um, you know, they're great kids. Uh, you know, they've come from great families is, is the second part. And just trying to, you know, talk through things, talk through issues that, that may pop up. Okay. Now you kind of hit on some of your coaching philosophy there with, uh, you know, understanding, um, you know, your players and who can hit a curveball, who can, who sits on fastballs and different things like that. Um, what else would can be considered a co coaching philosophy for you? Are you a small guy, small ball guy? Uh, do you trust, you yeah. know, run, obviously you said you like to do, um, what's your style? Yeah. Well, if you know me, I'm, a, I was a pitcher all my life and I've always coached pitching. So pitching and defense is number one for me, like across the board. I, I cannot stand when other teams score runs. Um, you know, and, and some teams let teams score runs. And, and by that, I mean, you know, they play the infield back versus infield up. Like, we're going to try to cut off every run we can. That's just less work we have to do in the offensive end. Right. Uh, and, you, and as we talked about, you know, getting through some of the section and regional pitches we're going to have to face, you know, that that may come down to that. It may come down to a one nothing 2 one game. Uh, I can fully see that happening. Um, so I'm a pitching and defense guy first and foremost. So, you know, the first thing we always do at practice is infield. Um and, you know, any ball that hits the fence or any ball that hits uh, hits the ground is not caught or not blocked. You know, we, we kind of we do some running uh, for that. Just try to, you know, it's going to happen. I understand that, you know, there's going to be balls missed. But for me, it's about effort. If you're just giving an O-lay and let the ball go past you, like, no, that's not OK. Uh, you know, sell yeah. out. Don't let the ball pass you because if the ball gets past you, then runners are advancing different bases. So, right. you know, we focus a lot on pitching and defense. Um on the offensive end, we don't have a whole lot of power. You know, we have a couple guys who can drive it out of the, out of the park, uh, but we don't have a ton of that. But we have a lot of great athletes. So, you know, hit and run is going to be a part of it. Uh, delayed yeah. steals, bunts, fake bunts, steals, um, you know, all the above. It's just how can we manufacture some runs when we're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark? Again, when, yeah. it, when it comes down to, you know, at Wheeling Central, a lot of people want to beat us, you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, just because, you know, we've been good for a long time. And, I, again, I'm not trying to sound cocky, but a lot of people want to beat us, so we're going to see a lot of people's aces. Uh, you know, so a team, maybe their their record says they're 2-9, and nine, but they have a really, really good pitcher. We're probably going to see that pitcher. So, yeah. so it's 
if you lose to them, it's people are gonna say, "Oh, you lost to a two and nine team." Well, we lost to their ace, who's really good. Like he's he's going to college to play baseball, you know. Like yeah, <laughs> that's that's part of it too. You know, high school baseball, you're only good as your starting pitcher. Um, and you know, I I have a feeling we're gonna face a lot of aces, which is great. You know, I love love to see it. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about <clears throat> excuse me what our record is in the in the regular season. I just want us to be ready for the playoffs, and I want us to experience. I want to see the best pitchers that anybody's got to offer. Uh, you know, I want to see the best lineups that we're facing and see, so we can be battle tested. You know, a lot Absolutely. of Absolutely. I could easily schedule our way to a, you know, 28 and 2 record. Um, but I don't think that's going to get us ready for where we want to go. No. Nah. I, I I do think that, you know, you have to have your teams that are going to challenge you that you, during the season that you play up on and you're going to have to have your teams to kind of build your confidence and kind of you know, get into a flow. You got to have a mixture of both. And if you're just playing down the whole time, yeah, you know, what good are you actually doing for a playoff push? So I, I agree to that. Um, one thing I didn't add on the the note card here, and I don't think it's going to be a, a big deal. Um, you know, I'm I'm familiar with Ohio and how they get recruited with PBR and stuff like that. Um, and I know PBR is trying to get into West Virginia and and get things going in there. Um, do you plan on going and taking your kids and telling them to do any PBR events? Because I think the Highlands is doing an event there every year now. Um, at least I yeah. saw that they try to get involved. Um, yeah, well, like I, like I said, these guys do. These guys play, all play travel ball. You know, we got a couple play for uh, Outlaws. We got a couple play for Bo Jackson Lead out of Columbus. Um, we got some guys who play Wheeling Post One. Um, we got some guys that play for a, a newly formed team you know, Northeast Padres, uh, scout team. So they're going to different events. So they're being seen, I hope, hope on a regular basis. Um, you know, I've got a list of, uh, you know, right here from one of the kids that played Bo Jackson Lee, he get, he's got a list of every coach within like a three hour radius. Um, and I, you know, if there's a kid, I, I really think wants to go and needs, needs a look, you know, I'll, I'll probably email or reach out to one of these coaches. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the right way is. Uh, you know, baseball is kind of one of those games where you got to kind of push yourself to be seen, uh, push yourself right. to almost in a uh, level of annoyance to college baseball coaches for them to <laughs> even, even look at you. Uh, yeah. you know, as bad as that sounds, it's it's the way it's done. Um, Just you know, takes I, one. I think I got a lot of contacts. Um, you know, I'll probably – try to reach out to to get these kids looked at. Um, you know, maybe they can give me a list of five schools that they're thinking about and I'll reach out to them and see what I can do on that end. But, um, you know, West Virginia doesn't really, like you said, doesn't really have a PBR, you know, PA kind of slips down into here sometimes and Ohio kind of slips over. Um, I know there's four or five of them going to a, um, the state games, West Virginia state games in Clarksburg, I think in June. Okay. Uh, so we got, we got a handful going there. Um, you know, it's, it's just it's tough. It's tough to get recruited for baseball. Um, I know I went through it with with Eric, who's a you know like I said a senior at Muskingum. It's it's tough to get seen. It's tough to for people to hear your story unless you unless you continue to pound them with emails and whatever you know Instagram posts and yeah YouTube and TikTok whatever you know whatever <laughs> format you use. I mean that's the way to to get it done. And you know um, hopefully I can be a part of that and help reach out to some of these, um, you know, d data collectors and, and get their names out there a little bit. So. Awesome. Well, coach, sounds like you're headed in the right direction for sure. Um, I'll be watching on game changer, um, monitoring everything. We'll have to uh, catch back up uh, once the season gets going. Um, but I got one last segment here for you. Um, this one is going to be sponsored by Corey's HVAC for all your heating and air conditioning issues. From service repairs and installations, call Corey at 740-317-3649. We'll let him know that Jeremy sent you. All right. Uh, so this is a rapid fire. Uh, I do this with every coach here. Uh, I want to know your pregame meal. What is a meal that you got to have before the first game of the day to kind of like settle your belly and get going? Well, if you know me, I eat chicken salads every single day for lunch, so – it's chicken salad and then sunflower seeds at the game. So, okay. So that answers the next question. Your in game snack. You're a sunflower seed guy. Um, what flavor? What flavor are you throwing in? 
Uh, I like taco. I'm a big taco guy. Taco season. Big, big tacos, yeah. And then uh, a backup would be um, cracked pepper. Okay. So I'm not – I cracked pepper I never really got into. Something the pepper gets me. I uh, definitely uh, – more of a uh, – what is that? The sweet and spicy? Yeah, those are good too. I, the, those are probably my go-to there. Uh, you got a warm-up song. You know, you're trying to get amped up for a game. You're trying to get amped up for anything going on, long drive. What's the song that you can put on repeat and listen to nonstop? Uh, probably uh, more, something Morgan Wallen. Okay. I'll say Morgan Wallen. Uh, going, to, going to age. Yeah. All right. Uh, you don't have baseball. Your sons don't have baseball. You don't have to travel anywhere. Uh, you, you don't have to work. You're off for the week. What's a hobby that you do? Uh, to keep your mind at ease. <laughs> Watch college baseball. Watch college baseball. <laughs> yeah, I told you. Well, I told you we went on a trip. So, a quick story. You know, we went last week. This is where, like I said, we have spring break off. Uh, you know, Thursday through Saturday. So, um, I'm a big Tennessee college baseball fan. So I, you know, I was trying to get tickets down there, and we're going to swing down, you know, Vanderbilt and catch them. But uh, Tennessee tickets were like 100 and. 40 bucks. So, you know, I was like, all right, what's plan B? So plan B was we went down to um, the Triangle, Tobacco Road. So we went down Thursday night. We caught NC State and Notre Dame. On Friday, we went to see Chase Burns pitch. We watched Wake Forest and uh, North Carolina. And then on Saturday, we went to Virginia and Duke. So, you know, all that's within an hour of each other. So that's what we did. Came home, you know, in time for Easter Sunday. So, it was a really good trip. Like I said, I'm a huge college baseball fan. Um, you know, I, I follow it constantly. Uh, I just, I just love. I don't know. I love the college game more than the pros. I think pros yeah. are more fun business now. Um, not that I don't watch it, but I'll watch it. But I, I just love the college game. There's, you know, the guy that can throw 85 and still has a role. You know, that guy doesn't even get drafted. He doesn't even sniff the big league. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. It's more it's more relatable for me, uh, and we had a blast on it. You know, we got to go on all those campuses, and you know, the kids loved it. Um, so it was a it was a trip of lifetime, and you know, we'll try to do somewhere else next year. I'll have to uh, send you a message here later on when uh, I'm a big A&M guy, being from okay. Texas. So okay, uh, A&M baseball and uh, Tennessee baseball are right there. I think three and five now ranked. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Texas A&M is really good. They're stacked. Yeah, they're they loaded up on some freshmen, and then they have uh, the old running back from the early, I think it was later 1990s area, uh, Javorski Lane. His son is a uh, he's a senior in high school this year, but he's he's already committed to A&M. Okay, he, just, he hits the cover off the ball. Yeah, I'm kind of ready to see him in a maroon and white uniform there. Yeah. Um, now last question here. We're going to ruffle some feathers here. Uh, would you rather? Beat John Marshall in a three-game set or Wheeling Park in a three-game set? Uh, well, I hope Park would play us. Park, Park doesn't seem to want to play us, and John Marshall doesn't, you know, drop us this year. But um, I would say Park Park would mean more just because, you know, a lot, I, I know a lot of the kids, and I've coached a lot of those kids on that team. Um, you know, I love them to death, and I'll root for them every game that, you know, they're not playing us. And, you know, hopefully we can make that happen sometime where we can play them. But I, I would say Park would probably mean more. All right. Honest answer. I appreciate it. Uh, well, Coach, I appreciate you uh, jumping on this morning. Thank you for your time. Uh, good luck to you. I think you got, uh, what, Barnesville next, if you can get it in? Well, we got Canaan Valley – or Oakland tomorrow, Canaan Valley Saturday, and then we're uh, at Bel Air and Barnesville. So we got Barnesville coming up. They're ahead of us in UVC, so that will be a big one for us. Yeah. Uh, I know they're good. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can get some games in and get on a little bit of a roll here. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for your time, Coach. Uh, back to being banking, uh, banking today. <laughs> back from vacation, so right. uh, take care of them uh, Monday morning uh, emails for your Tuesday morning right. now. So yeah, good luck to you, Coach. Uh, we'll talk soon. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir.